Hello my fellow smug ones, hope you're all okay. Today I thought I'd give you some other news stories as well as about the usual TV license stuff. Anyway, let's begin. Today's news stories are from The Sun, which apparently is Britain's number one best-selling newspaper. Anyway, first up we have those apparently nasty people at the BBC. It says, a BBC rap for OAP fee fear. Debt collector worry. It's not sound good. The BBC will continue to send licence fee debt collectors to vulnerable Brits' homes during lockdown. How does that work? Shops like Argos can't open normally. So how come the BBC can still send people to your house? It just does not make any sense. Pensioners, the poor, and people struggling without work face having their doors knocked on by agents demanding money. Okay, and what do they say when they knock on your door? Can I come in and see your TV set? Well, no, it's a lockdown. You can't. Outsourcing firm Capita, which chases debts for the Beeb, has instructed field staff to carry on. A letter from bosses told them, this lockdown dictates businesses will have to close, but it does not include those that deliver essential services. How does people knock on people's doors, demanding money, become an essential service? It doesn't. I'm sorry. No. It is our current intention to continue to operate as we have been. Concerned capita staff had admitted they feel uneasy at the prospect. One said it doesn't feel right. It's not right. And he's right. It isn't right. I suggest you quit and get yourself another job. The last thing old people need is burly BBC debt collectors banging down doors demanding money or interrogating them. Which, yes, is right. In fact, no one needs that. The BBC licence fee should just go. Many people the BBC could target may be pensioners, stripped of free TV licences in August, which, in my opinion, was a complete disgrace and the BBC should be ashamed of themselves. Three million have since been told to start paying the £157.50 fee for a colour licence. Rebecca Ryan of campaign group Defund the BBC called the move appalling. Well, yes, it is. TV licensing said, we'll continue to visit unlicensed addresses during the second lockdown. Well, you can't come in because it's a lockdown. I'm sorry, end of. Okay, next up we have Jabby Xmas. Says vaccine test results in days. Which would be good. Finally, some good news. Although I have heard some NHS groups say that we won't have a vaccine at all next year. So I don't know what's going on there. Covid jabs may be ready by Christmas, the NHS boss said yesterday. Okay, so they've changed their minds. The results of clinical trials are due within days and Sir Simon Stevens said that if the vaccine is approved, he has prime GPs for a December rollout. He said yesterday on the eve of the lockdown, we're waiting to fire the starting gun. Good. Finally. Yesterday, Boris said in his announcement that the second lockdown will end on December the 2nd. There has been rumours apparently that it will continue way beyond then, especially as the furlough is due to be extended to March, but I'm really glad that Boris still says it's going to end on December the 2nd. Boris Johnson was urged last night to ensure lockdown ends on December the 2nd. News yesterday that the furlough pay scheme will be extended led to fears that the curbs will last five months. Well, I for one am glad that's not happening. In my opinion, lockdown should only happen for those places where the infection is high. Where the infection is low, I think we should still carry on as normal. But that's just my personal opinion. you obviously entitled to your own. As lockdown 2 kicked in, Sir Ian Duncan Smith said, we must absolutely, for the sake of people's livelihoods, come out on December the 2nd at the latest, and not a day longer. And like I said, I for one think he's right. Next up, we have some news about the US election. OK, let's look at these two. So... Joe Biden is on 253 and the current president, Donald Trump, is on 213. Now, I'm pretty sure the other day it said Joe Biden was on 264. So I think that's possibly because of recounts. I'm guessing why he's dropped down to 253. They need 270 to win and each state is worth a certain number of points. Apparently, if Donald Trump loses Pennsylvania, which is worth 20 points, 
then it's all over. Joe Biden's won. No matter how many lawsuits Donald Trump wants to push, it will be over. I have heard, though, that Donald Trump, out of the two, is more keen to do a trade deal with us. Armed Trump mobs at counts, Prez lawsuits hold up results. So his lawsuits himself are holding up the results. Rifle-wielding protesters beside vote counts last night as America's wait for this next president reached boiling point. Democrat Joe Biden was inching towards a White House victory as results from his showdown with Donald Trump spiked over into the third day. I mean, can you imagine waiting that long over here? We want to know the day after, at the very latest. They must be getting frustrated, but I don't think there's any need for rifles. That's, that's a bit bonkers. Next up, we have some Remembrance COVID rules. Poppycock. Keep moving in two minutes silence or get tracked. <laughs> what? <laughs> People must keep moving during Remembrance Sunday's two minute silence or fill out test and trace forms. What, so is everyone just going to carry on walking about while the silence is going on? A war hero has blasted a rule which will apply to services and parades attended by dignities and veterans. What about people who can't move or have trouble moving? I think they should be spaced out. I don't see what's wrong with that myself. But to keep moving is a bit silly, to be honest. Okay, and last up, we have two auction stories. Apparently, a pair of boobs is worth 7.6k. 7 a Playboy model who jokingly advertised her old breast implants as great stress balls got £7,600 for the pair. Wow, that is a bit crazy, isn't it? And next we have a pigeon. A pigeon apparently can cost you £1.2 That's right, bids have been flying in for what is set to become the world's most expensive pigeon. The auctions has ruffled feathers as more than 300 offers pushed the price up from £180 to £1,178,705 with nine days still left to go. What? Does this pigeon lay golden eggs or something? Why is it worth so much? Two-year-old Belgian racer Nukim is already a crack competitor. In 2019, another Belgian bird, Amado, was sold for 1.1 million to a Chinese construction boss. Wow, that's, that's crazy, isn't it? You could buy loads of houses for that. Anyway, what do you think of these news stories? You can let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this, you can let me know by giving the video a like, subscribe to stay updated, and I'll see you in the next one.